You're never too old to learn something new, so today I have five visual motion graphic techniques you can use in your future projects. Especially if you're looking for creative ways to make your projects stand out from the bunch. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Jordan Bertone with Sonduck Film. Be sure to drop a like on this video, it helps us out a ton, and let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is make our glowing multicolor title. Here we have our text layer, and we'll start by going to Effect, Generate, Four Color Gradient, and Effect, Stylize, Glow. I'm going to set the colors to a nice pink, purple, blue, and aqua, but feel free to choose any colors you like. Next, I'll change the position of the pink color to be above the left side of the text like this, and the position of the purple to be diagonal from the pink like this. I'll repeat these positions with the blue and aqua colors, but on the right side of the text, creating this zigzag pattern, and your gradient should look something like this. Lastly, for the glow, I'll set the radius to 300 and intensity to 1.5. Now we have this nice glowing multicolor title for our composition. Next, we'll create the main distorted circle element for our project. We'll start by selecting the ellipse tool, set fill to none, stroke to solid color, set the color to white, and stroke width to 1. Hold shift, then click and drag to create a circle like this. Hold the control key, Double click the pan behind tool to center the anchor point, then use the align tab to center the circle in the middle of the composition. Next, press S for scale. We'll scale the circle down to 25%, set a keyframe, move to 1 second on the timeline, set the scale to 5%, move forward to 2 seconds on the timeline, and set it back to 25%. Highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, then open the graph editor tool and drag all of the curves inward toward the center a bit like this to smooth out the animation. Now that we have our base circle made, highlight it, right click, select pre-compose, we'll name the pre-comp to circles, and click OK. Double click the pre-comp to open it, go up to composition, composition settings, change the duration of the pre-comp to 2 seconds, click OK, then extend the length of the circle so that it's longer than the duration of the composition, this is going to be important for later. Next, we'll start duplicating the base circle, and this is where the project can start to get a little bit laggy, so make sure that you lower your resolution scaling. Duplicate the first circle, press S for scale, highlight all of the keyframes, then drag the percent up by 5 like this. This moves all of the keyframes up by 5% together. Repeat this process of duplicating circles, highlighting the keyframes, and increasing the scale by 5% until you have about 40 circles. You can make more or less depending on how big you want the entire circle to be. Once you have all of your circles, back out of the pre-comp, highlight the pre-comp, right click, select time, enable time remapping, then alt click the stopwatch for time remap and enter in the loop out expression. The reason we extended the duration of our circle to be longer than the composition earlier is because if we didn't, Every time this pre-comp loops, the circles would disappear, then reappear. Lastly, we'll add our displacement animation by going to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace, set the amount to negative 25, size to 90, I'll click the stopwatch for evolution, and type in time asterisk 400. Now we have our main distorted circle element made for our composition. Before we move on, as you may know, creating motion graphics can be incredibly time consuming. That's why we've made thousands of templates to help you save time and produce professional work with our Motion Duck extension. For example, you can easily preview templates from one of our packs and just click the apply button. Then you can quickly change the template parameters and you're done. So if you're looking to gain an edge within your work, check out every template we have for After Effects and Premiere Pro with the links below. Next, we'll quickly add our background and noise effect. For our background, we'll go up to Layer, New, Solid, Set the color to be a really dark gray just above black like this, and click OK. We'll put this at the bottom of the layer list because it's the background, then go up to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise. Set the amount of noise to 5% and uncheck Use Color Noise. You can increase the amount of noise more if you want a more intense static effect. You can also apply this effect onto an adjustment layer if you want the noise to apply over all the other layers too. Now our project has this nice animated static background. Next, I'll show you a different main element you can make using text and the liquify effect. Here we have our basic string of text, and we'll highlight it, then go up to Effect, Stylize, CC Repetile, and Effect, Distort, Liquify. 
For the Repetile, expand right and expand down until we make a big square of text. This will be different depending on what you make your text say. The idea is to just expand your text until it forms a big square like this. For Liquify, open up the Bloat Tool options, set the brush size to 300, select the tool on the bottom left, and then click and hold on the text box for a moment until you form a bulge like this. Now, we'll animate the bulge, so what we'll do is set a keyframe for Distortion Mesh Offset, move forward a bit on the timeline, and then reposition the bulge to a different spot on the text square. Move forward a tiny bit on the timeline and set another keyframe so that it pauses for a moment, then move forward more on the timeline and move the bulge to another spot. Repeat this process as many times as you want. The idea is to have the bulge moving from spot to spot on the text square and pausing between the movements. Now you have this alternate element you can add to your composition. To finish things off, we're going to add a few additional accent elements to finish off the composition. First, we'll add some additional text, so I'll select the text tool, I'll type out some additional info here. Feel free to add whatever information you want. I'm going to position this above and in line with the left side of our multicolor title like this, and it's a nice accent to the top of the composition. Next, I'll type out another additional string of text at the bottom of the composition. Once that's done, I'll select the rectangle tool and create a small square that's a bit taller than the text we just typed out. Now, I'll position the square next to the text, then center both of these elements at the bottom of the composition like this for a nice accent underneath of our main circle element. And you're done! You have this nice and dynamic composition using some fun new techniques in After Effects. So now you have five more tools in your arsenal of motion graphics. Speaking of which, be sure to download our 100 free template pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro. That link is available down below, and remember, always be creating.